Hello darling, my name is Mina and welcome to my channel Mina Reads and today I am going to be reading four black romances and I'm going to let you know whether I think that they're worth the hype or not. These four books are books that I have either been eagerly anticipating or they've been on my TBR for a while and I've heard nothing but amazing things about them. So I'm finally going to give them a go and I'm going to put all my thoughts consolidated here in this video. Stay tuned. The books that I'm going to be reading are Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert, Restore Me by J.L. Seegers, Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, and Honey and Spice by Bolu Babalula. So let's get into the video. Also, since this is a black romance reading vlog, this is the perfect time to tell you guys that I'm launching merch. So I have these merch designs. These are my Bad Bitches Read Romance designs. So you can get this emblem on sweatshirts, hoodies, crop tops, t-shirts, all that good stuff. It will be linked in the description below in my bonfire storefront. So if you're a bad bitch that reads romance, check out my designs. All right, so basically the setup is that Sloan she has not been like dating for a while because her husband died four years ago and she's finally kind of decided that she's ready to be back on the market, ready to be out and socializing and all that kind of stuff again. And uh, she ends up continuously running into Dominic who was her late husband's best friend. And so she runs into Dominic while she's at, out at the club with her friend. Um, she also is running to Dominic at work because they have to um, work on this like uh, hotel renovation together and it's like a huge thing because he owns this like construction architecture company and she's like an interior designer so they're like clashing at work they're clashing um, in social settings and they have all of this like tension uh, because they've had this contentious relationship for a really long time and the tension kind of comes to a head and they decide that they have a lot of like physical chemistry together so they decide they're going to have this sort of like friends with benefits type of vibe and Dominic has always been super obsessed with her because we find out that um he has met her in college they met once while she was super drunk at a party and he immediately knew that she was kind of the one for him and so they're sort of like it requires a little bit of suspension of disbelief a sort of like faded mates in a contemporary setting kind of vibe because Dominic feels like immediately like it's kismet and they're meant to be but you know she ends up married to his best friend instead and so it's lots of angst on his part and I will say that Dominic can be very like juvenile and a little bit ridiculous a little bit over the top he's very like obsessive possessive you know it's a little bit of red flags but for me they look very green on the kettle screen if loving him is wrong I don't want to be right Dominic has the best vibes like he's so He's so sexy and exciting and like he's just so passionate, so all in and I love him. I love everything that he has going on. Y'all be weak in the knees. Stand up. Stand up. I think that his vibe is just so so good the writing is really good I feel like it has a lot of like emotional intensity and I will say that a lot of Dominic and Sloan's interactions are very like sexually charged so I can't and they're like they're very sweet very romantic he says a lot of like very sweet kind romantic things about her but I don't feel like we see them spending that much time together outside of like intimate moments but when I tell you that the book is steamy like it's it's steamy it's very high heat in a way I was not expecting going into it and girl they are they are going at it they're going crazy and I absolutely love to see it I'm having a very good time with it I'm about I want to say I'm like 57% into it and they're getting into like their uh, friends with benefits -y type arrangement and they're keeping it a secret because they are both still very close with Eric who was Sloan's late husband's family so they're very close with um, Eric's mom and Eric's sister and so they feel like if it comes out that they're together that it's going to cause like a huge implosion of their sort of found family um, and so yeah there's just like a lot of angst and tension and there's like some stakes and I'm just I'm enjoying it I'm having a very good time with this so far and it's just giving me like everything that I wanted to give so yeah I am going to keep on reading I'm hoping to finish it today it's Sunday and I'm just having such a good time reading it you guys like you don't even get it like it's just the vibe is just so so good and so fun and I'm loving it so yeah that's where I'm at so far I will update you with anything else that I have to say but like yeah it's just so good it's just so good 
Okay y'all, so I've been reading for a little while and I think I'm like, I think I'm like 75% in. I think, let me double check. 73% which is 341 pages into the book still really enjoying it but I do have some concerns I kind of feel like the pacing is a little bit off in this story because um as I mentioned to you like they enter this sort of friends with benefits -y, like arrangement and they're dating and in that time period there are like a lot of sex scenes like a lot of sex scenes and I'm having a good time I love them I think Dominic is like so sexy and they just have like all of the steamy scenes are very very fun he's a very dirty talker he has a filthy mouth he's very uncouth and i love it live for every moment of it but i will say that there are so many sex scenes in secession i feel like it can be overwhelming and it feels like the story kind of takes a back seat to all of these sex scenes happening and so i do feel like there's maybe like some structural pacing issues at hand especially because we have about 140 more pages of the book left to go and so i just know that like this third act conflict is going to be full of a lot of tomfoolery and a lot of angst and i don't know i just feel like i do feel despite how much i am loving and enjoying it i do feel like it might be a touch too long um so that would be my only like real critique of it but I am having a good time and I feel like no matter what tomfoolery and clownery they get up to, the book is getting nothing less than a 4 star from me, maybe even a 4.5 just because I really do love Sloane and Dominic together. I mostly love Dominic as a book boyfriend, like he's just he's just so my type. I'm very obsessed with him um, and he's very obsessed with Sloane and that's how I like my fictional men to be. Very much giving what needed to be gave and i'm having a ball i knew that with how angsty this book is that the third act breakout was going to be like ridiculous but i feel like we're already inching towards that third act breakup territory i am at about 85 percent into the book and basically there is a miscommunication going on because sloan believes that Dominic is like hung up on some other woman from his past and so she feels like really insecure about that and she doesn't want to express the fact that she loves him because she thinks that he is like still deeply madly and passionately in love with this figment of her imagination that she believes is the great love of Dominic's life and that's why she's not going to tell him that she feels deeply and passionately about him and it's just like how about we have a conversation? How about we just talk? How about we just stop making shit up? Like when I tell you that she, she, like she not jumping to a conclusion. She's flying to a conclusion. She, she's inventing shit to believe because it just like, it, yeah, like he says something that's kind of a miscommunication, but she's like, she's writing him a whole epic love story and she's saying that now there's no way that he possibly feels any kind of feelings towards her because maybe potentially in the past he was very in love with somebody in 2008 mind you this is they're talking about something that happened in 2008 bestie i need you to tighten the fuck up and be serious okay i i hate the third act of almost every romance novel i ever read because it just always like just be for real just be fucking serious have a conversation be for real it, it just it's pissing me off one day we will be free of the third act breakup industrial complex and on that day i will celebrate in the streets with my sisters because this is this is free us okay free us power to the people okay so i have just finished restore me and i think i'm going to be giving it four stars i had a really great time reading this book i think it's incredibly well written i think that the drama the angst the sexual tension this you know it was just it was all so good i really felt like the chemistry the passion the energy the energy between the two characters i felt like there was a very good sense of this like I, I almost want to say like this soulmate level connection that the characters are kind of meant to have that I feel like the author really was able to sell me on and as much as in the last clip you will have seen I was kind of ranting and raving about the third act breakup I really don't feel like it was that bad I don't feel like it was super egregiously melodramatic I think that the 
the main character like she was just in a, a difficult emotional situation she didn't have the tools to really properly handle it and also Dominic he was being a little bit um strange in his communication so I understand how she got to some of the conclusions that she was at but at the same time she was being a little bit over dramatic I will say that I think the reason my reaction to the third act breakup was so or like the the first inkling of their third act breakup was so strong was because one I'm just not a huge fan of third act breakups but also I did feel that the book was a little bit shoddily paced I think that the pacing could have been a little bit faster I definitely don't think that this is the kind of book that necessarily needed to be almost 500 pages long um I think that for the most part the author utilized the page space well but I do think that some of the stuff about the way that their relationship development is structured particularly like in the middle from as much as I loved it it did get a little bit repetitive and I think as soon as we got out of that it made me realize like how the book felt like it was maybe dragging on a little bit this is their debut and so it can show in that kind of like you know sort of inconsistent pacing and stuff like that but i still think that it was very well done very well executed and i would definitely recommend it so i had a good time and i will absolutely be reading the sequels to this revive me part one and two which is about sloan's best friend mallory and her relationship with an old fling named chris very excited to get into that very very excited they we have little hints of their relationship in this and it was so like fun and juicy and I was having a good time so I can't wait to get into it. And up next I will be reading Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. And by up next I mean right now because I have already started it. I'm like 9% into it and my initial impression is that Brad and Celine's dynamic is very funny. Particularly I'm in love with Brad. I think not like that because he's a baby but like I love him like he's my son I'm adopting him he's very adorable very funny very cute and he's also very melodramatic he's like a bit of a drama queen and I love it for him um something happens where he's in like this accident with Celine and Celine ends up getting hurt and he's like oh my god like she's gonna die and it's gonna be all my fault like he's just so dramatic um but literally she just like sprains her wrist or something like that but it's just so funny like how seriously he's taking it and and I love his energy. I love his vibe. He's very, very silly guy and I enjoy him. So that's where I am so far. Very, very brief update, but I am probably going to be reading a little bit more today, but I'm going to take off all my makeup and uh, be chill, be casual, be cute um, in my pajamas. And I will talk to you guys. Okay, I'm about to go to sleep, but I am now 30% into Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute. And when I tell you that Talia Hibber has her foot on bitches' necks, this is, this book is so good. I haven't read a YA book and I can't tell you how long, especially not a YA romance. But this is so good. Like, it's so funny. I'm obsessed with the characters, love their motivations. I think that their dynamic is just iconic. There's already a lot of like emotional depth to it as well, which I kind of wasn't expecting, but I absolutely should have because I think that Talia is so good at balancing like humor and fun and wit and banter, but also having like good emotional depth and um, a, like a lot of depth to the connection that the characters have together, but she's just doing all of those things and doing it flawlessly and it's just so good it's so fun it's so sweet and hilarious and I'm just like flying through it um oh my god like it's so funny and I really love the um audiobook as well I would definitely recommend it if you can because I feel like the way that the narrators um just like their comedic timing is just so good so it's definitely something I would recommend if you have the option to listen to the audio because it's just so good okay if you don't know what the synopsis of highly suspicious and unfairly cute is because I didn't give one uh it's essentially about Bradley and Celine they are two high schoolers they're in their final year and they used to be best friends um like childhood best friends but they ended up um like kind of stopping their friendship when they first got into high school because Bradley kind of entered the popular crowd and Celine is more of a like nerdy um outcast sort of person and so they have like a lot of beef and they have like a very contentious relationship because they both sort of feel like the other abandoned them and so there's lots of like just beef and tension because of this um terminated friendship situation so essentially they both end up um taking part in this program which is like for 
youth is like a competition type thing and if you win the competition um you get like a huge scholarship and so they're both in competition for this scholarship but they're on the same team it's kind of like i don't know it's like a wilderness explorer type um type of program and so at the part that i'm at um they are currently like on a the same team they have to kind of work together but each a uh, participant is like individually scored on how well they do that day and like what leadership qualities they show etc etc um so they are sort of in competition with one another but they're kind of needing to work together a little bit and they just had this argument about like why they terminated their friendship and why they like why they started um beefing and it was such a good argument i love when an author can write a really really good argument and like just make it so compelling on both sides and I think that Talia did that so well because the argument like I was shook and shaken I love their drama I love their tea it's just so good and I also have to say that Bradley is my funny dramatic bisexual son and I'm obsessed with him he's so fucking hilarious this is one part where this guy is like flirting with Celine and he's upset about it and he's like yeah and then there's this other guy named Alan and like I think that Alan is so hot but it's clear that Celine doesn't agree but that's okay because I have already you know he's like I've already accepted the fact that I have bad taste like his his POV is just so funny to me like everything that he says makes me giggle I love him he's family to me so bad and I love him and Celine like it's just giving it's just giving like I'm I'm obsessed bad. I just completed um, Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute on my commute to the dentist's office. And when I tell you that this was one of my best reading experiences of the year thus far, it's so good. Like, it, it's so funny. I absolutely adore the characters. I think Brad and Celine are just really interesting characters um, individually, but as a unit, they are just so good. I think that Talia did an amazing job with the friends aspect of this friends to lovers or ex-friends to enemies to lovers thing that she has going on because I think that the the friendship connection between Celine and Brad like it feels really strong even when they hate each other just like the the depth of knowledge that they have about one another and the way that they care about one another the way that they understand each other's flaws each other's quirks the way that they can kind of predict each other's behaviors like to me that shows a very like intimate um, knowledge and understanding of another person which is what I think makes friends to lovers very fun to me most of the time is like that idea of people really just knowing each other super deeply and then falling in love and so I think that Talia did that so well and this it was just very like pitch perfect for me um, and my other favorite friends to lovers by Talia is definitely the roommate risk incredible book but yeah, like I just felt like it was so good. I just felt like they were so connected. It made so much sense. Um, and even when there's like, you know, drama and miscommunications and things like that, I really felt like they made sense and they felt very grounded. Um, and I mentioned this in like my Goodreads review, if anybody reads Goodreads reviews, I don't know. But I mentioned this in my Goodreads review for the book, which is that I think that one thing that Talia does very well is her character work. She's incredible at writing a character and making them feel very believable and making their their fears, their concerns, their insecurities, um, establishing them pretty early on so that you can have like a really clear through line to how they got from this place to the next place like emotionally um because you know there's like you know third act drama there's some miscommunications and usually I would feel really infuriated by that because I think a lot of times authors don't you know they don't plant the seeds of like who the character is well enough that you could predict that a character is going to react in this way or you know they'll make it seem like these characters are so like well, I don't know these characters are so great at co communication and then you get to the third act and suddenly they're miscommunicating all over the place like you know things like that don't make sense which make third act breakups feel very irritating and it's just like this is so stupid this is so pointless but I just felt like Celine and Brad like they made so much sense um in their thoughts in their actions in the way that um I don't know the way that they carry themselves in the situation like I just feel like it made so much sense which I love I need coherence in a narrative I very much need things to make sense I need there to be a sense of clarity for me to really appreciate 
a book and what it's doing and so I think that that's something that Talia really offered me which not enough romances do and so I love that but it was so good I would definitely recommend the audiobook as well um the narrators do a really excellent job and they really like brought the characters to life for me so yeah like it was just a great 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 reading experience um and I have to figure out what I'm going to read next if I'm going to read um Honey and Spice or if I'm going to read Seven Days in June. I think that maybe I should go with Seven Days in June first just so that I can get it done and out of the way and I don't keep putting it off because one thing about me is that I have been putting off reading Seven Days in June for two years. Two years maybe more like it's been a very very long time coming so maybe i should read seven days in june first i don't know <laughs> no maybe i'll make seven days in june like the grand finale and i'll read honey and spice first okay i've decided okay hi baddie so i am 30 percent into honey and spice and <sighs> know how I'm feeling I think I like it I think but I'm not a hundred percent sure okay I feel like the first 20 percent for me was very arduous to get through I have been reading that first 20 percent for weeks now <laughs> um, uh, the filming process for this video has been taking way longer than I anticipated and reading this book has just been so it was so difficult to get into it that first 20% because uh, there are a lot of pop culture references and there's a lot of description in that section and I'm sure it's going to continue but I feel like I wasn't fully prepared for how much of it there was and our main narrator Kiki she overly describes everything so she will be telling you about like some some girl in her class or something and she will give you a whole you know just a million elaborate metaphors to describe this girl and what kind of person she is what her aesthetic looks like and it just like intense descriptions for even the most minor of characters and so it just really made it like a little bit difficult to get into because we don't get to the main like inciting incident of the story until much later um around like i said the 20 percent mark where kiki ends up kissing this guy named malachi she and a few of the other girls on campus have sort of deemed him the new campus fuckboy because he has been dating casually dating a few different girls on campus and when it all comes out the girls are like kind of arguing with each other um like fighting over him and so kiki thinks that he seems like a bad dude whatever she like warns people to stay away from him but then she meets him at a party and he seems cool and she needs him to help her make somebody else jealous so they end up kissing and then they kind of interact they banter a little bit and she's like hmm, maybe he's not so bad but she still sort of doesn't like him they have a lot of preconceived notions about each other that is causing beef but they're gonna do some sort of fake relationship I'm sure because I've heard that that's the fake that's like the main trope that the story has is that it's a fake dating trope we haven't gone to the fake dating portion yet and like I said I'm like 30% into the book so I don't know I feel like it's taking the book a little bit longer than I would like for it to get into the main action and for the characters to start really interacting um the main love interest they've just started interacting but like I said only past like the 20% mark 20% that's a whole lot for me to have to get through before the two main people are having like a meaningful interaction they did meet in like the first few pages um but they just kind of saw each other briefly but now they're finally talking i don't know how i'm feeling i think that it is very funny i will say that i think that bola Baba Lola is really funny but i don't know if i'm loving the flow of the story okay that's what i'll say so i'm gonna see how i feel as things progress okay hello friends i've just completed honey and spice I have many thoughts. I'm unsure how to articulate them all. Um, so let's just let's just attempt. First and foremost, I have to say that I am in love with Kiki and Malachi, and I do think that they have one of the best romantic dynamics I've read in a very long time. I think that their banter is so top tier. I have to say, I think in general, the the black British girlies may have the lock on like the best banter in the romance genre because 
like the dynamic the jokes the just the general vibe okay of the dialogue between the love interests in black british romances slay like slay so i don't know i think that like their dynamic and the way that they bond like their bond is so strong and i just think that they were so deeply entertaining and i love the way that the author wrote their interactions to be because there are kind of like just pages and pages of them bouncing off each other and joking back and forth and like getting to know each other and so we get a lot of these like really in-depth moments of them just spending time together and becoming closer and so we get like this really great look into their dynamic which i feel like surprisingly doesn't happen as often as you would think in romance novels because i think a lot of romance novels they'll show you the characters kind of bonding joking around but a lot of times those things are uh told to us in summary so it's like oh and we spent you know several nights together laughing and talking and it was so great and he just has the best sense of humor and i love him so much you know and you don't always get to see what makes their bond so special and so i think that the author did an amazing job of showing me that like and i think that beyond the main relationship um and some of the like drama they're in i also felt like the side characters were really strong kiki has like this um group of friends she has a friend named amina she has another friend named ashanti and uh chioma i think and i felt like her connection with them and like her budding friendships with them was very great to read about like it just made me feel really happy like the sisterhood and the bond between them um and it was just like in general it just has such good vibes it was so fun it was a very like vibrant read i definitely had my issues with the beginning of the book like i said like it really took me weeks to make it through that first 30 percent but the last 70 percent was so engaging that i read all of it in a day pretty much like in a 24 hour period and i just felt like it was just such a good read like it was just so fun and like i said like malachi and kiki their vibe is so good um and one of my favorite scenes in the book is kiki tells malachi about like her favorite book series of all time and she like completely nerds out about it she's like a fantasy geek and so she tells him of all this stuff and then they like end up going to this book convention together and it just was so sweet and so fun when he surprised her with the tickets like it just was so nice like i loved it it just was so such a sweet thoughtful romance with so much like depth and i just loved it so much like i really really loved it but that beginning was it was rough it was rough did anybody else have that experience with the book like was it just me because i really feel like the beginning was so slow and it took such a long time for us to get to the inciting incident that it was like damn i am so not interested in this but then once we got there i was completely locked in and loving it so does anybody else have that experience is it just me i don't know let me know in the comments now it's time to read our final book for this video seven days in june I'm nervous y'all. I'm nervous. I have been putting this read off for like a full two years at this point. It's crazy. The reading needs to happen. Uh, so it's going to happen in this video, but I'm scared. I'm scared that I'm not going to love it. I'm terrified. Okay, I am 141 pages into seven days in June and I'm shook. So I attempted to read this last summer around my birthday and I put it on pause because it was like it was just kind of not the vibe I was looking for for my birthday week. Um, but I am kind of enjoying it a lot, even though I was really nervous that I might not. Uh, so Seven Days in June is about this woman named Ava and this guy Shane. They're both authors in very different genres. Ava, she writes a like very popular fantasy romance, like paranormal vampire love story thing. Um, and so she writes that. And then Shane, he writes like, Pulitzer Prize winning like sad girl lit and essentially they end up reuniting because they knew each other in high school they end up reuniting at an author convention um for like black authors and they're talking about their experiences in the industry uh and they you know they end up meeting each other again and uh there's this scene where she's like stop writing about me in your books and he says you first and at that moment I was like okay I'm locked in, I'm obsessed, 
I need to know what's going on here. And so essentially she has been writing Shane into her vampire romance, making him like the lead vampire love interest who's like really toxic but really sexy. And then he has been writing her into this like series of books that's about a like sad, depressed girl runaway. And so they're like talking about each other and to each other through their literature pretty much and that's interesting and a little bit fucked up and so we finally got some insights into their dynamic when they were younger and their dynamic when they were young is absolutely batshit insane they're like they're just like using together not at all what i was expecting um but yeah and so it's interesting to see them reuniting after that being kind of like their first dynamic being like that toxic and that dependent on substances and um now they're both sober to an extent i think ava still uses like some pain pills and stuff because she has a chronic illness she has like a migraine condition um and so i think she still takes some forms of medication but it doesn't seem like she's abusing them quite yet uh but shane is entirely sober and he is trying to stop self-harming because that was an issue that they were having. And so the story is really dark and they really met in a very bleak place. And something that uh, Ava says when they reunite is that seeing him again is a trigger. So I'm very nervous about how things are going to develop. But it is just like very juicy kind of and i'm enjoying the structure because we have like then and now chapters and um it's like it's cool and as of right now where i'm at uh ava has a daughter named audrey and audrey is like she is a firecracker she is so wild um and she did something to get herself like suspended from school and so to make sure that she's able to stay in like this elite private institution ava has bribed the principal by telling her that she will find her like a new elite english teacher for the school and so she asked shane to be an english teacher at her daughter's school and so that's where things are from there shane was already an english teacher he's just gonna like transfer to her daughter's school but it's interesting everything that's happening is very fascinating i will however say that the writing feels so facebook auntie coded because why is ava constantly running around talking about like hashtag girl boss hashtag mom life stop saying hashtags please i can't i can't do it Okay, hi. So I've been reading on my porch all morning and I made it another 100 pages into the book. So I'm about 140, not 140, 240 pages into the book. And I'm obsessed. I'm like really obsessed with it. I really, really love it. I think that Shane and Eva or Ava and like their dynamic is just so interesting to me. I love personally i love the angst and the tragedy and all that like it's it's really doing something for me so i'm really vibing with it i'm really vibing with it and we finally have got to a point where we figure out what happens uh that june all those years ago that has led to where the characters are now and uh why they have been separated and haven't been talking for so long and the the reasoning is very like it's very the notebook I won't like completely spoil it but it's very much like the notebook you know if you've seen that it's so crazy so we just got to the point where they like clear the air about that where we figured out you know what happened that led them to be you know torn apart in the way that they were and it's like so that happened they just said that they're in love they're they're boo loving right now they're hunching they're knocking boots good for them shane is so sexy but that's not the point um, and they don't they got all this stuff going on cool 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 There's over a hundred pages left in the book. I'm nervous. I'm scared I'm I am very scared about where the story is about to go. I Am very nervous, and I don't know how I feel and also There was this side storyline going on a little bit where Shane he works as like a teacher like I mentioned he works as an English teacher now as well as being like a famous author and so through his teaching he has acquired a number of students that he mentors 
and one of those students name is Ty and it seems like there's something going on with Ty um, and I'm nervous about where that storyline is going to end up like I just I have a bad feeling about that storyline and I'm just nervous like I'm I'm worried I'm concerned I don't know okay y'all so I finished I finished seven days in June and I really don't know how I feel okay I really enjoyed it I thought it was a great reading experience um, but I am really dissatisfied with the ending I had some concerns about the subplot with Shane's mentee and how that was going to go and I very much just like what ended up um, transpiring regarding that character and uh, the way that his narrative was used as sort of a catalyst for like the third act breakup situation that we got and I just felt like that was I didn't like that. I didn't like it very much and then I in the end like they spend some time apart and I think that time apart was really necessary because like we already know their relationship is very it comes from a very like toxic place of that like you know drug bender that they went on when they were in high school and that's like the start of their love story so I think that them you know coming together rekindling their flame and deciding to take a break um, and to kind of heal and come at their adult relationship from a more healed point of view or point in time I think that that makes sense and so that was like cool but the ending is so abrupt because they're apart for some time and they're still talking while they're apart but they're not together and then the book just kind of ends as soon as they fully reconcile and I think that for me was not satisfying that was not satisfying and that was not what I look for when I'm reading a romance that I really love that's going to be like five stars because we don't get to see enough of their relationship as adults we don't get to see anywhere near enough of it for me to feel like yes this is a relationship that has like long-term viability i don't know if i feel that i don't know if i feel that i think their story was incredible to read but i like finishing a romance novel and feeling like oh my god that was so great these people are going to be married and together forever and i don't feel that i don't know so that that does bother me because i don't feel the feelings that I typically have at the end of a romance novel and I think that I'm gonna say something that is maybe a little bit controversial but I think that this is a literary fiction in a romance trench coat and I'm not a huge fan of that I think it's a good book I think it's a great story I think it's well written um, and I did enjoy it so I am going to give it four stars but um, yeah it doesn't it I can't like I can't quantify what it is that is bothering me and how to define it because I'm not upset about the story dealing with hard themes but I really needed the story to I needed something from the story that it didn't give me so I can't give it five stars but it was a book that I really enjoyed um I don't know if it's a new favorite romance for me but it was pretty good all right besties so that's gonna be the end of this video i am going to show you guys like my final ranking of all the books i'm gonna show a little graphic because i i don't know i mean i love them all i thought they were all very fun very entertaining very well written um and they're definitely all authors that i will be reading more from in the future talia she was already kind of like my bestie but um three of these were new to me authors so it's exciting to know that i have um more works by them to look forward to and yeah i'm definitely going to be reading the perfect find soon because that is getting a movie adaptation with gabrielle union so i have to check that out so i will be reading that one which is by tia williams i will be reading i actually have it right here so i'll show it to you oh no Ugh. but yeah i will be reading love in, in color by bolu babalola and i will be reading revive me part one two and i think it's going to be a part three by 
J.L. Seegers because these authors, they have charmed me. I will be reading more by them and I'm excited about that. Thank you so much for your patience um, getting through this video because one, I think this video is going to be a little bit long. Two, I've been working on this video for months and I have been promising you guys this video for a long time. So I'm glad to be getting it out. Uh, let me know anything that you want to let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you have any other Black Romance recommendations. Let me know what your thoughts are on these books if you read them did you love them did you hate them i want to know all about it in the comments and thank you so much for watching hopefully i'll see you in my next one bye you guys Mwah.